Hi guys, welcome to the Feel Good Kitchen. Today we are making a hearty fall main dish that is totally plant-based and it is perfect for Thanksgiving. It feels like a really special treat, but it's actually really easy to make. It is a maple glazed acorn squash and we're going to stuff that with garbanzo beans, pecans, caramelized onion, and dried cranberry. So it has a really great holiday flavor and the soy chorizo gives it a meaty taste so even carnivores will totally love it. So to start off with, we're going to get our acorn squash. If you've never seen one before, it looks like this. Inside they have this cavity that makes a perfect little bowl for your filling. It is pretty tough on the outside, so it's not super easy to cut. So you need a big knife, and you just wanna be really careful because it can roll around a bit. So to start off with, I cut really close to the stem there. Then you can turn it sideways. So you're gonna have your hand on top of the knife so that it doesn't slip, and then you can use a little bit of body weight. And you can cut it just a little bit on the diagonal also so the two pieces are more evenly sized. All right, and that's the inside. You can just scoop that out with a spoon. So you just wanna get the stringy bits out. And you have to scrape the insides just a little bit to make sure that you get a nice clean bowl. So don't throw these away. You can roast these just like pumpkin seeds and they're absolutely delicious. So for the four pieces, you're gonna have two tablespoons of coconut oil or you can use a virgin olive oil and two tablespoons of maple syrup. So we're working with oil and syrup here. Delicious. And we want to place the squash to begin with cut side down. And then you can either use your hands, if you don't have a little brush like this, you can just use your hands and rub it over. Brush this to coat nicely. And then we're gonna sprinkle this generously with salt and pepper. Because we want the skins to have a lot of flavor too. Not everybody's going to wanna eat the skin. It's kind of like a baked potato, like some people will love it and some people won't, and that's fine. It's a free country. All right, then we flip them around. And again, we're gonna brush the inside and put maybe a little bit extra even so that it's pooling in the middle. We're gonna score it so that way you want a little bit extra oil and syrup to be able to sink into the squash. We'll also add the spices so it just makes it sweet and spicy and flavorful. All right, so to score, we want to cut three cuts on the diagonal this way and then across. So we're creating this crisscross pattern. I like to use a little knife that has some teeth. It just makes it a little bit easier. So you can use even like a little steak knife if you have that, if you don't have a paring knife. And just, this does get slippery, so just be really careful. And then I like to just grab a fork and prick the flesh of the squash and kind of turn it a little bit. And again, this is just so that the syrup and the oil can sink in nicely. The squash itself without seasoning can be a little bit bland, so you want to add this flavor and let it really soak in. You can just put either a big pinch of dried nutmeg or if you have a whole nutmeg, just grate it all over the top. You wanna add a little bit more seasoning than you think you need to. Season pretty generously, because again, it's gonna soak into the meat of the squash. A big pinch of cinnamon and some salt. I like to use sea salt and black pepper. And then we can just rub that in again. It's going to be so yummy. To give it even just a little bit more flavor, we're gonna add some garlic cloves that are going to roast inside the squash. So I'm gonna get the garlic cloves and cut them in half. So you just wanna add one clove per squash half. So cut it in two, throw it in there, 
and it's kind of protected inside of the squash so it won't burn. And these are ready to go into a 400 degree oven. It's going to take between 45 minutes to an hour to get nice and soft and browned and caramelized. And in the meantime, we can prepare our filling. The first step in the filling is going to be to caramelize some onions. So we're going to use one small onion. We can just cut slices that are about a quarter inch thick. All right, and see so you get these nice slices. So I'll just put this in the pan. And we're going to add three tablespoons of olive oil and just a pinch of sea salt, and this helps the onions release water as they cook. All right, so we're going to cook this over medium for about two minutes until the onions get translucent, and then we're going to lower the heat down to medium low. And now they'll cook slowly, and you can just give them a stir about once every five minutes. So the onions are cooking. They're going to take almost as long as the squash, about 40 minutes. So in the meantime, I'm going to make a sweet potato puree to serve with the acorn squash. So you wanna start off with a pretty big sweet potato. This is a little over a pound. And you're going to roast it in a 400 degree oven. So in real life, you might be cooking this potato while you're making the squash. But for now, I made one already last night. You can put it either in a high speed blender like this. It probably won't work in a regular blender. You'll have to use a food processor. And we're just going to put in this one roasted sweet potato. And to that, we're going to add about half a cup of veggie broth and half a cup of almond milk or cashew milk. And then we're going to add our spices. It doesn't have to be super precise measurements. I'm just going to put in a big pinch of salt and pepper, just a little pinch each of ginger and cinnamon, and just a little pinch of nutmeg. And then we're going to add about a quarter teaspoon of chili powder. This adds lots of flavor and a little bit of heat. And one small garlic clove, you don't want it to be too overpowering. And two teaspoons of maple syrup. It's gonna be good. And I'm gonna blend that up. So good. Next we're going to prepare the greens and the first thing you want to do is just separate the stems and the rest of the leaves. The stems are going to take a little bit longer to cook. A lot of people just throw them away. You don't have to do that. You just have to cook them for an extra couple of minutes. So we'll put those into the pot first and then we can chop up our leaves and you want to make the pieces a little bit bigger because they're going to shrink down a lot. And then we're going to thinly slice one clove of garlic. And then we can just put the stems on the stove. We're gonna add just a little bit of salt to start off with, a splash of olive oil. These are gonna cook super quickly. I'll just set these aside and then right before we serve, we can just toss these in the pot until they wilt and then they'll be ready to serve with our acorn squash. Okay, so the stems have softened and the onions are almost ready so we can go ahead and finish up our filling. So we'll start off adding just a teaspoon of balsamic vinegar to the onions. And this adds a nice savory flavor. I'm going to add the rest of the ingredients here just so you, can, you guys can see it. Obviously, you can keep this on the stove at home. So we're starting off with two cups of cooked garbanzo beans. If you're using canned beans, you wanna drain them, rinse them. It'll be about a can and a half of beans. And this is a third of a cup of chopped pecans. And we'll put this back on the stove and we're going to turn up the heat a bit so that the beans and the nuts get a little bit toasted. So we'll turn it up to medium for about two minutes. And now it's time to add our soy chorizo. So this adds a ton of flavor. It's really spicy and it's probably the only what they call fake meat that every carnivore I've ever given it to loves it. So you don't really have to add other seasonings because it's all in the chorizo. Okay, so we're gonna stir that in along with about a third of a cup of chopped parsley. 
So this is the Italian parsley. It's the flat leaf parsley. And then I'll wilt down also as it cooks. And a quarter cup of dried cranberries. All right, I'll just put that back on the stove and stir it up. And when it's all heated through and sizzling, it's ready. And just fold the ingredients in gently. You don't want to smash the garbanzo beans as you stir it up. All right, so that is looking fabulous. It smells amazing. And it's been about 50 minutes now, so our squash should be ready. Oh. They look beautiful. All right, so those are all ready to go. You can see they've absorbed the uh, the coconut oil and the maple syrup, so all of that good, sweet flavor has sunk in. So I'm just gonna take these little garlic cloves that we're baking inside the squash, and I'm going to chop them up and add them to this filling. I'm just gonna throw that in, and so we're gonna add the filling in big heaping piles. I mean, I think you look at this and you can see that it's a special occasion meal. Okay, so we'll just set this aside and now all that's left is plating these with our other sides. All right, so our greens are done. I'm just going to put a little pinch of smoked salt on them. This is optional. You could also just use a little pinch of sea salt if you like. And our sweet potato puree. So this is going to be the base of the dish. It's nice and creamy, it has a beautiful color, it's a little bit sweet, it's spicy. So we're just covering the bottom of the plate. So it looks like that, so that's a nice start, right? And then on top of that, we'll put one of our beautiful stuffed acorn squash right in the middle. And then just add a little, little bit of greens on the side. And these greens just add a delicious earthiness. They add beautiful color. So all that's left is to garnish. I like to put one pecan half on the top. If not a lot of, of uh, dried cranberries are showing, you can add one or two just so they're peeking out nicely. And then we'll finish with just a few more little sprinkles of Italian parsley. All right, there you go. There's our beautiful maple glazed acorn squash. And doesn't it just look like Thanksgiving? I hope you guys love it. It tastes even better than it looks. I also just wanted to say how grateful I am for you. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a beautiful holiday and take care. Bye.